Uh, this is the fourth and final video about uh, installing the custom fan shroud on a C3 Corvette. Uh, this is the car I've been working on. This is my 78. And uh, first thing I want to show you is the uh, fan controller that failed. This is the SPAL fan controller that I had on there originally. It was very nice when it started out. It worked very nice and ended up failing after very limited use. So I removed it and uh, went with some uh, Derailly fan controllers. Now this one uh, had uh, two buttons here on the end. It says low and high. And uh, that's how you actually set when you wanted the fans to uh, turn on and off. And this is some other indicators here. And mine just started to uh, just randomly turn the fans on and off and uh, couldn't seem to set the uh, fan cut on temperature or anything. So uh, after talking to Spal, they, uh, they told me probably the fan controller had failed. And uh, I offered to uh, buy another one if they had an upgraded model. And they said they did not. So uh, this was the controller I had. And then this is all the uh, associated wiring and uh, relay that came with it. And I took all that off and uh, just totally rewired my fan system. Now, uh, I did mention before, I think, that uh, I was going to have my fans turn off at highway speed. So uh, I wanted to show you the, uh, the RPM switch I'm using for that. I actually mounted it right here inside the glove box. It's a JEGS RPM switch. I think it was about $40. And uh, you can set it for a normally open or normally close relay, and uh, depending on how you want to use it. And it's very simple to set up. I'm going to turn the ignition on and it'll go right into the setup mode. Uh, you hear the fans turn on because I had the car running. But um, it cycles through the three settings that you have available. Starting with 8 cylinder, 2000 RPM, and normally open relay. Now when that pauses on any three of those settings you can change it. For example, 8 cylinder you could change it to 6 cylinder if you're running a 6 cylinder engine. And uh, there's where you change the RPM where you want the switch to change. And then uh, normally open there, you'll notice that's the, uh, the contact closure that I uh, set for what I'm doing. And any time that the engine's turning over 2,000 RPM, the fans will turn off, meaning that you would be at highway speed and uh, you wouldn't need the fans to operate. You'd have enough ram air to cool the engine. So. Uh, I've already checked this thing out. Everything works on it. Uh, I did have to go underneath the dashboard there. I ran my wires from the glove box there where the RPM switch is and I went over and uh, tied my power into the uh, fuse box and then also the uh, it needs a tack signal as well and I just went up under the dash and tied into my my tack wire that came from my distributor. It seems to work very nice. Uh, I also, if you notice, there's a, uh, a four pin Molex connector there so that I can just unplug that and pull my my uh, glove box out if I need to. Okay, so now we're gonna take a look under the hood and we'll see the fan shroud and we'll talk about the wiring. So you can see the fan shroud worked out very nice. You can see how the fans bolt to it. And uh, up above it, I put, I believe that's a one and a half inch uh, angle of angle aluminum. Also put a uh, a rubber edge on it here, and this is where I brought the harness up and connected the fans and the controllers uh, where you could get to them. And uh, I've got it set so that, or I got it set up so that you can remove that aluminum angle with the two bolts at the ends. This bolt here and then you'll see the other one on the other side. All stainless steel fasteners on this. And uh, you can swing that out of the way, unbolt the fans and pull the radiator right out if you ever need to service the radiator for any reason. And uh, all of the control wiring and the power and everything comes down this side of the car in that conduit there, right around the radiator cap, runs up 
on this side of the car, passenger side of the car, up to few, two fuses. Now this is the two fuses that go to the to the main power for the fan. So they're 30 amp fuses each. So one's for one fan and one's for the other. This goes down and ties to the starter where the main feed comes from the battery. And uh, I've also got a ground wire in here that's for the uh, fans and it also ties to the um, engine block down where the ground ties from the frame of the car to the, to the engine. Uh, and then I added this uh, terminal block here. This this comes from the from the instrument panel or from the inside of the car, and uh, the blue wire actually comes from my RPM switch, which grounds my control relay to actually turn the fans off at highway speed. And then I have a uh, ignition feed which you need to uh, actually operate the fans and operate the controllers. And then I have another wire here that's just 12 volt fused all the time and I'm not using it for anything I just added it in case I needed to, uh, 12 volts out here in the future now uh, if you notice uh, on the control side of things here I have a uh, um, terminal box here that comes from the inside of the car basically the wiring and the power and all that and then uh, that's where I interface everything with the, uh, with the controllers. And then this relay here is the one that interrupts power to the fan when the engine reaches 2,000 RPM or whatever RPM I select. And it interrupts the fan power so that at highway speed the, uh, the fans won't operate. Uh, now I selected 2,000 RPM because this engine has, or this vehicle has a 411 gear ratio and most all the time at highway speed I'm turning at least 2000 RPM uh, so and then also here is where the main power these are big heavy wires because the fans are you know at least 15 amps each so I have the, the power main power coming in off my two fuses that come come here to this terminal block and then of course the two derailing uh, fan controllers sitting there the one on the left actually controls the fan on the left and the one on the right controls the fan on the right, so it's, you're not going to get confused. So um, what I uh, what I have here, I have the the first one set uh, for the first fan to come on at about 170 or so, and then the second fan comes on at around 200. And I was going to try that and and see how that works out for me. Uh, you can set them to come on and off whenever you want. Um, you actually set an on an on point you can disconnect your fans and let your engine warm up to some temperature and then have the uh, tweak the uh, the little pot that's inside there so that you can uh, set it to come on where you want and once the engine cools off by about 10 degrees they'll turn off now I'm gonna go over to the other side of the car show you a little closer on the fan controllers here. These two little rubber plugs are what hides the actual uh, uh, trimmers that you, uh, trimmer pots inside here that you can uh, actually set the uh, temperature to come on at. Uh, they also have two Molex connectors here that go uh, a short pigtail from the controllers and uh, I brought them actually out of the harness where they could be unplugged and uh, they run down the driver's side of the car and then come over here by the alternator and then across and actually to the two sensors that came with the with the setup and uh, I'm using like a a housing a thermostat housing from like a 1975 Corvette I think it is it's an iron one it has uh, two ports there where you can actually screw those in because in 1975 they had a lot of pollution garbage on them a lot of temp sensors and things and if you get one of those you can have two locations there for your uh, for your sensors, one for each controller. Then uh, I get another shot of those fans, and you'll see how the the fan shroud bolts here, and then the rectangular pieces that I put on bolts directly to the fan, and that worked out very nice. And there's only a small section of the radiator that's not covered by the shroud. You can see that less than an inch, probably over here on the left hand side, and it's. In terms of clearance issues, this is what I was talking about before. You can see 
where the bushing to the air arms uh, comes up here it comes up really close so you do have to move the fan over as far to the right as possible and even when you do that over on the right hand side you do have a small place actually the bolt from that strut might even be touching that fan shroud a little bit but I don't think it's going to be a problem so I'm going to go underneath and show you how the fan shroud looks at the bottom I'm going to slide right under the car here Hopefully it'll focus here. See if I can adjust my flashlight a little bit. Okay. Now you notice how that fan shroud comes down there. Slides right in between the radiator and the bracket. You'll see those two screws that the uh, that's the two screws that I added. They happen to be a hole right there in that lower radiator housing there, or lower, lower radiator bracket. And I just put a small hole in my shroud and just ran those screws right through. Take a look over here on the right side. You see how it worked out. Turned out very nice and it seems like that uh, I get a lot of flow across the entire surface of the radiator now. These little flaps when you turn it on, when you turn the fans on, it actually pulls those down shut or closes closes them down tight. And then uh, supposed to at highway speed, if the fans off, then ram air through the radiator would just blow those open and vent more air out through that way. See my wiring, I came up from the two fans together, connected them together with the uh, I believe that's a Packard 56 style terminal there. Came with the fans and I just reused what I had. So the fans are really nice. They do really flow a lot of air. And I don't expect to have any cooling issues, which I never have had anyway. The car seems to pull, cool pretty good going down the road. It was quite a bit of work to do this, a lot more than what I expected, but I take a lot of effort in making my wiring straight and clean and user friendly when it comes to troubleshooting it or if you have to, for example, like like I said, if you had to service the radiator, I have it so that you could just unbolt that and swing it out of the way and get to your radiator. Well that concludes the videos, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it helps somebody uh, fabricate a system of cooling system if they need it thanks for watching